Major funding for Don't Look Now is provided by the Mabel Louise Riley Foundation, a Boston-based foundation with special interest in children and youth. Additional funding is provided by television stations and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. There you are. Who's that? I am here to educate you. What's that you're watching? Oh, that's much too violent. You should be watching public television, the channel that parents, teachers, orthodontists, and prison guards approve of. That's so boring. That's why they approve of it. Hey, I was watching that. Have you ever wondered how television programs are made? No. Well, you're going to find out. Where am I? You are in a television studio and about to make a television program. This is a script. Turn to page one. Now introduce the program. What? Do what you're told or you'll suffer the consequences. What consequences? Hey, Viley, camp director sent me over to get two more buckets of your chili. Oh, he must be having all his friends over for lunch. No, they must be at Zenmies, or if they're not, they will be after they've tasted a vile chili. Shut up and eat! You're both wrong. His <laughs> toilets are clogged. He says your chili burns through block even quicker than Drano. <laughs> oh, he does, does he? Yeah. <laughs> so, can I have the chili now? Sure! You got it! Maybe we should explain what this is all about. You see, the people at public television, their brains have finally turned into mush. They've got me and a bunch of other kids to make this show. Worse, the show is live, so when we make a mistake, everyone will get to see it. Don't worry, you pretty little head, Dylan. No one's gonna see any mistake we make. Why not? This is public television. No one's watching anyway. Not even my mother? Does she love you? Yes. Then she's not watching. The reason we're going live is so that you, the viewer at home, can call up the studio and by answering a simple question, win a Don't Look Now t-shirt, just like the one I'm wearing. <gasps> what did you do that for? Well, I thought you'd look better in a wet t-shirt. But then again. Lisa, you've got 20 seconds left to fill. But I'm all wet. I always thought so, too, dear. Anyway, you've got 15 seconds left to fill. I can't think of anything to say. Well, you better think of something fast. You've got 10 seconds left to fill in your stand-up. I can't think of anything to say. Five, four, three, two, one. I know what one. you say. Ha-ha! <laughs> Avast, my hearties. The sharks are hungry today. So, you walk the plank. Stop! Stop! Don't push him in yet. What is it this time? It's a letter from the President of the United States. The President is paying my ransom. I'm saved. Doubloons, pieces of eight, food stamps. Wait a minute. This is nothing but an election pamphlet. Why is the President sending me an election pamphlet? He needs every vote he can get. <laughs> Well, here's one he won't be getting. Walk the plank. Ha-ha! <laughs> Republicans. Ha-ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs>
Go on. And that's the explanation for that. Miss, miss. Yes, what is it, Paul? Speak. The Jenna has about to have fallen off the roof. No, 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 Paul. One does not never say just about to have fallen. That's using the past subjunctive with the present pluperfect. It is more grammatically correct to say the janitor is about to fall off the roof. No, miss. Rug, miss. While you were talking, miss, he lost his grip and fell, miss. Uh, Lisa? Oh, hi, Dylan. Lisa, how'd you like a date with a really good-looking kid? Why, Dylan, that'd be great. Oh, excellent. Well, I'll go see if I can find one. <laughs> I bet you're all wondering how we got on this show. So are we. But we're not the only kids that get on TV. Recently, the producers have sent out a cameraman to get regular kids telling jokes. They say it's to fill time, but I think it's a plot to replace us. This kid, see, he's so dumb, I go, look at the dead bird, and he looks up. There are three men walking in the desert. The first man's carrying a canteen full of water, the second man's carrying a backpack full of food, and the third man is carrying a car door. Now they ask the first man, why did you bring the canteen full of water? And he says, in case I get thirsty. They ask the second guy, why'd you bring the backpack full of food? And the guy says, in case I get hungry. So they ask the third guy, why did you bring the car door? And the guy says, in case I get hot, I'll roll down the car window. Um, what has four legs and can't walk? I don't know, what has four legs and can't walk? A table. What's green and can fly? I don't know, what can, what's green and can fly? Super pickle. This boarder said to the farmer, does it always rain like, through the, like this through the roof? And the farmer said, no, just when it rains. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, our first phone-in contest. I have this slightly damp t-shirt to give away Lisa, as a prize. don't you think we should give them a dry one? But I wanted the dry one. Too bad. Anyway, we'll give this t-shirt to the first person who can answer our question correctly. We get all our information from last week's newspaper, so if you've been reading them, you'll have it easy. Envelope, please. There you go. Congress has just given President Reagan permission to keep the Marines for 18 months. In which country? Okay. Lisa, where are you going? To get some newspapers, so I can answer the question and get a dry t-shirt. But Lisa, you have to tell the people at home the phone number so they can reach us and talk to us on air here in the studio. But I don't know the phone number. It's on the cue card. Oh. You can call us collect at 617-491-0340. How do you call collect? You just dial the operator and tell her you want to call collect to 617-491-0340. And if you're in Mountain or Pacific time, don't worry. We'll stick around and answer your questions so someone out in the West will have a chance to win. But in the meantime, so us kids in the studio don't get bored while you all rush to your phones, I'm going to change the channel. No! It was worth a try. Right. We're going to watch the group UB40 sing their song, I've got mine. I'm not talking. Me neither. Dylan. Dylan. What? Someone wants to talk to you. Oh. Hello? Hello? Who is it speaking, please? Wendy. Where are you calling from, Wendy? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh. Um, do you know the answer to our trivia question? Lebanon. You're correct. You win a new Don't Look Now t-shirt. Nice going. Oh. Um, but don't hang up yet because our operator needs to talk to you so they can get your address and send you your t-shirt. Congratulations. Bye-bye. Dad. Yes, son? I don't think it's fair that Mom does those nasty things behind my back. Son, I don't think your mother does nasty things behind your back. 
Then tell her to stop spanking me. Son, can't you see that when your mother does that, it's for your own good? How can I see? I haven't got any eyes down there. You know, I don't think it's fair at the camp director making that poor kid in cabin eight wear diapers just because he wets his bed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I agree. You do? You do? Sure. Who do you think has to go to all the work of boiling the diapers to sterilize them? <laughs> okay, Lisa, come over here. I want you to take the camp director this bowl of soup and tell him it's pee. Genuine pee. <laughs> Don't spill any. Oh, boy. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She really does. Here, try again. And get it right this time, Dylan. She loves me. She loves me not. Right. Now, can anyone give me a properly constructed sentence using the word dismissed? Miss? Yes, yes, Paul, dear. Speak. Class dismissed. No, 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 Paul. That was quite stupid. You left out both the article and the verb. A properly constructed sentence would be the class is dismissed. Now, something new, something different, a chance, a chance for you to, excuse me, you seem to have a little problem over here. Hey, why are you going with that camera? I'm taking it to be repaired. But you can't do that. I need it. What for? I need it to take my picture so everybody can see me. <laughs> oh, get this kid, huh? Well, you can't have this camera, Sonny. But if I don't have the camera, then how will everybody at home be able to watch me? Maybe I'll be doing them a favor. With a little luck, they'll switch channels and watch something good instead. Oh, a wise guy, huh? Well, look, buddy, I need that camera. The camera is faulty, Sonny. Yeah, and what's wrong with it? Well, uh, I got, I mean, uh, the, uh... Nothing's wrong with it. You're just trying to sneak up early to see the ball game. I know you. This camera is broken, kid, and I'll have you know I'll be slaving over it trying to make it work until late in the ball... Uh, I mean, late in the evening, that is. Yeah, and how exactly is it faulty? Well, it... It makes people look ugly. I mean, it makes them look uglier than they already are. Really? It makes me look ugly? Well, uh, second thought, maybe it wasn't the camera after all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the camera's broken. <laughs> go, go, go and fix it. I'll just use one over here. <laughs> the kids are so vain these days. Ball game, here I come. <laughs> Boy, little critter, do I ever have a hot tub for you. <laughs> hey, I smell skunk around here. You better call the camp director. Nah, it's just the smell of lunch cooking. Why? You gotta be kidding. No. What do you think the camp director does with all the skunks he catches? Oh, that's disgusting. Here you go, Tina. Have some more skunk, uh, I mean, stew. Um, there you go. Here's I don't think I'm hungry you. anymore. Shut up and eat it. Great. Oh, oh gross, man. There was these three people, right? And then, one, his, there's a sister and a brother, and, and the brother ate a spider. So the sister told on the mother, and the mother said, I told you not to eat between meals. The customer said to the waiter, why are you, why are you carrying your, the tray over your head? And she says, it's important for everybody to get a balanced meal. This doctor goes inside the 
Patience Romani tells him, you, I have bad news and good news. First, uh, bad news. So he says, you have cancer. And then the patient says, what are the good news? He says, well, I won my golf game yesterday. Why did the jelly roll? Why? Because he saw the apple turn over. And now we come to the educational segment of our show. Oh, oh no. no! Come on, guys, give us a break. This is public television. We have to have an educational segment. Why? Because if we don't, then we won't get paid for doing the show. You get paid for this? This is public television, so we get an educational grant. How do we get in on this deal? Yeah. Do the educational segment. How? You'll see. <laughs> Dylan, you're about to learn how to make donuts. Donuts? No, this is one weird show. Steve here makes 500 dozen donuts every day, enough to feed every citizen of Clorinda, Iowa. That is, if all 6,000 citizens craved donuts on a particular day. So, Dylan, you need donut mix made from flour. And you add water to it. You also need mussels. Thanks a lot, buddy. Now, Dylan, mix the batter. That's better. Uh, no batter. Now, knead the dough. I always need dough. Don't give me any lip, Dylan. Roll it out with that rather large rolling pin. The one that Steve might use on you if you aren't careful. Right, Steve? Right. It takes a swift wrist to make donuts. Right, Steve? Right. And even if the donuts don't look just right, they still have to be eaten. Right, Steve? That's right. OK, Dylan, you try it now. While Steve fries up your lovely specimens, Dylan, try your hand at filling jelly donuts. It's very simple. Just put the donuts up against the spigot, and it will squirt just the right amount of strawberry jelly into them. Mind you, don't overfill them. They tend to get very messy. And that's how donuts are made. Right, Dylan? Right. Oh, you don't want to go swimming with me? Just where do you think you're going, young lady? Sit down there. Out to the riding stables. Oh, no, you're not. You haven't finished your greens. But, Violet, the rest of the kids didn't finish their greens. You know, you're right. So you can just eat their grapes, too. Here, shut up and eat. You got a long way to go, Lisa. Don't waste time talking, honey. So, Paul, you're new to this country, and your parents don't speak any English, right? Right. So if they're watching the show, are they going to understand it? Let me put it this way, Tina. You were born in this country, right? Right. And your parents speak English, right? Right. So if they're watching the show, are they going to understand it? Hey, you got a point there, Paul. Hearty <laughs> are. I must me hearty. Splice the main brace. And you, you walk 
Mr. Plank. But I can't die now. What do you mean, you can't die now, you inky little squid? Well, if I do, I won't be able to fulfill my horoscope. Oh? And what does your horoscope say? It says that today I'll cause great happiness to many. I need to live to do that. Oh, no, you don't need to live to cause great happiness to many. <laughs> I don't? No, the sharks will be ecstatic, you. <laughs> now walk the plank. Enjoy the little morsel. <laughs> This is Lisa Rossman from Don't Look Now, and I'm trying to find the answer to the burning question, should girls play in sports teams with boys? I think that they should be allowed to play in sports. I mean, I'm, I'm not totally against that. I'm not against it at all, I should say. But as long as they kept not co-ed, all right, if, if they don't mix them up together, all right, it's okay. Because when you mix them up together, you always got problems. You always get the guys sneaking into the girls' lockers and stuff like that, and that just causes problems. Do you think the girls should be allowed to play in sports teams with boys? Yeah. Why? Because I think they should have equal opportunities. If they were playing like a contact sport or something, they they get hurt. Well, suppose there was a woman on the team, right? And we were playing and we tackled her. She might go, oh, 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 you know, be sad and cry and stuff. And she might get hurt real bad. In a word, the prevailing attitude here is negative. And frankly, I think that stinks. I mean, what do they think they are anyway? Macho men? But if you're a top-flight news reporter with impeccable credentials, you just let this thing roll right off your back. But if you're a rookie news reporter with no prior experience, like me, you take action. <laughs> Or should I call you Maybelline? What's his problem? in the game the score all tied up at 14 to 14 and it's number 21 lisa rossman can, can that be right it is lisa rossman running in for the touchdown what's what he means by that but what the heck i always knew i had a nose for news <laughs> Why can't my teacher ever make up her mind? What do you mean, dear? Well, yesterday she told us that 3 plus 2 equals 5. And just this morning she told us that 4 plus 1 equals 5. Why can't he ever make up her mind? Don't ask me, dear. I never could understand that new math. Well, hi, Don. No, I went to the donut shop. Who could forget? You really made a fool of yourself, Dylan. I brought you back a box of donuts. Oh, how nice, Dylan. My favorite kind, too. And a card? How thoughtful. Plastic display donuts. Do not eat. Inspected by number 14. You understand? Is this your idea of a joke, Dylan? No, I don't think it's very funny. I don't know why public television is letting you kids make a TV show anyway. The last group of kids that was in here stuffed pens down the toilet and clogged it all up. It made a terrible mess. Yeah, but those were Zoom kids, so don't blame me. <laughs> hey, it does work. What is this? Yellow yuck. I know that, but how'd it fall on me? A technical trick, dear, you wouldn't understand. Try me. Well, you see, Tina, every time you say duck, 
certain words, you get yellow yuck dumped all over you. We waited to use it for the longest time. They wouldn't let us try it out on Alistair Cook. What word? D <laughs> no, you don't, Tina. I'm not that stupid. I used to work on Zoom, you know. Should have guessed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, um, please, please, I'm too young to die. Harass, Mickey. You should have thought of that before you forgot to do your homework assignment. <laughs> so come on, walk the plank. But, but, walk. The shark spit me out. Well, shiver me timbers. You must really taste foul. Hey, listen, don't blame me, because I... <laughs> well, hardy are. Shiver me timbers. It worked. Ha-ha! <laughs> look at you, swine. <laughs> this is even better than I thought. It even works on other sets. Now, what are the magic words, Tina? Yet. Yeah, oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, Bali, your food lights up my heart. Oh, hear that, everybody? Thank you, Dylan, at last. Someone who appreciates my cooking. Yeah, it lights up my heart. Every time I eat it, I get heartburn. <laughs> well, I'm happy to hear that, Dylan, dear. Have some more heartburn. Uh, there's plenty more. show so far? You really want to know? Yeah. Ready, guys? Lousy. Oh, come on, guys. Give me a break. This is our first show, and it's live. Nothing like this has ever been seen on public television before. Yeah, and after today's disaster, nothing like it will be seen on public television again. We think there might be complaints from adults who really don't understand us kids. So, we sent a camera crew out and a reporter to describe a show as if it had already been aired. Our reporter did give the impression she disapproved and was looking for criticism. Now, when you see this film, remember that these people are talking about a show they couldn't possibly have seen. Right? Right. I think it is the most terrible, the worst, the most obnoxious, the most disgusting show I've ever seen in my life. The worst thing I've ever seen. I can't stand the show. I don't like the show. It's terrible. I never saw a worse show on television in my life. It's, it's totally gross. It's the worst thing I ever see on television. <laughs> now remember, that film you just saw was shot last week. Those people were talking about a show you're watching right now, today. So if you were thinking of complaining, forget it. We already saved you the trouble. Thought lovers, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought so. What's wrong with you? Oh, What's wrong with your face? Oh, Lisa just kissed me. Oh, gorgeous! Oh, Violet! Oh, yeah, what do you want now? This milk is sour. It's way past its due date. It's set to sell before June 12th. It's August 2nd. Let me see that. Oh. You know, you're right. June 12th, and it's August 2nd. Why, this milk is good for another 10 months yet. Drink it up and consider yourself lucky. You know, his stew is only good for another three months. It was dated October. I had the feeling this morning I should have waterproofed my boots. If anybody wants me, I'll be down at the pond. <laughs> All right, Paul, who broke the Treaty of Versailles? Not me. I never touched nothing. 
One does not never say nothing, Paul. One says anything. Oh, hello, son. How did it go? Well, first the marathon, Dad. Running 26 miles. Sure is hard work. Well, at least you finished, son. That's what's important. Oh, by the way, son, I wouldn't uh, eat your mother's soup today. It's much too thin and very, very salty. <laughs> sure thing. Have you seen my foot bath around? My feet are really killing me. Mom said she'd leave it on the stove for me. <laughs> Hello? Adam? What do you want, Dylan? Well, Adam, you seem pretty knowledgeable about girls. Girls? Ah, you want to know about girls. Well, come to the right place. How can I help you? How can I get Lisa to go out with me? You and Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Just the thought of you and Lisa. Adam. Right, sorry. To go out with a classy girl like Lisa, you gotta impress her. Impress her? Yeah, like, take her to a movie or a concert. Well, my brother gave me these two tickets to the police concert. Police concert? That ought to do it. No, these tickets are very hard to get. I happen to know Lisa's a big fan. Really? Really. So all you gotta do is go up and ask her. She'll die to go. Really? Trust me, Lisa would give her next 40 days to someone who would take her to the police concert. Really? Well, the next two. But don't just sit here, Dylan. Go and ask her. I'm sure this will work. I guarantee it. Okay. Cool. Where was I? Let's hear your joke. All right. Once around Christmas time, this lady went into this restaurant and ordered broccoli with hollandaise sauce on a chrome plate. She made, specifically stated a chrome plate for her various reasons. So the man got the broccoli and the hollandaise sauce and put it on a plate, set it in front of her. Says, hey, wait a minute. This is not a chrome plate. Bring it back and fetch me another one. So, all right. so he goes into the kitchen, you know, puts it on another plate, sort of a dumb chef, and he brings it back and sets it in front of her and says, this is not a chrome plate. For the hollandaise, there's no plates like chrome. And so anyway, then he said, he goes, Lisa, um, and I was like, Lisa? Did he? Hi, Dylan. And so he goes, Lisa, and I was like, um, Lisa? Yeah. Hi, Dylan. And so he goes, Lisa, and I'm sitting here. Oh, there you are, yes. Tina. You're needed on the link set in about 30 seconds to set up another one of those stupid oh, competitions. God. So move it, move it, move it. Come I'll on. tell you about okay, it later, okay. Tina. All right, Landy. Bye. Um, Lisa? What is it, Dylan? Well, Lisa, uh... Would you spit it out? Lisa, I wonder if you'd like to go to the police concert with me. Why, Dylan, I'd love to. See, my brother got me these two tickets, but I don't know what to do with them. Dylan? Yeah? I said I'd love to go. You would? Yes. That's excellent. I'll, um, um, uh, I'll meet you outside the studio after the show. Right. Bye. Bye. Wow. Yeah? Well, she's, yeah? She said she'd love to. There, you see? I told you she would. Stick with me, Dylan. I know all the tricks. Adam, I have to ask you something. Why would Lisa want to go and see a bunch of old cops playing marching songs in a park? Dylan, do you know who the police are? Of course. They're the guys who direct traffic and hand out speeding tickets and catch thieves. Dylan, boy, you've got a lot to learn. Come with me. And now for our second competition. Um... What was it now? A new fairy tale. Oh, yeah. Remember that? A new fairy tale has been discovered. Oh, yeah. A new fairy tale has been discovered, recently discovered, by, um, what was the name of them? The authors who wrote Hansel oh, and yeah. Gretel. The authors who wrote Hansel and Gretel. If you can give us those authors' names, please call us at 617-491-0340. Call Collect. That's the police? That's the police. Now, do you know why Lisa's going with you? And I thought it was my charm and wit. Dylan, I may tell you some of my tricks, but not that many. <sighs> Hello? Hello. Hi, what's your name? Cheryl. Cheryl, hi, Cheryl. This is Tina. Do you know hi. the answer to the question? Yeah. What's the answer? The Brothers Grimm. 
Right! You just won yourself a Don't Look Now t-shirt. Are you great. excited? Huh? Are you excited? Yes. Oh, great. Um, where do you live? Um, 392 Clinton Avenue. Brooklyn, okay. Well, you can tell the operator when you, when you still hold on, tell the operator and you, you can talk... thought I'd see the day when you, Adam, would fail a test on sex education. Well, I didn't have much time for the written portion, miss. I spent too much time on the practical assignment. <laughs> you animal! Mercy. Hey, Bali, the yeah. church director sent me over here to get the worms you put in your refrigerator for a fishing trip. Worms? Uh-oh. Hey, kids, how about having some meatballs on top of that spaghetti? But, Bali, you can't... Shut up, Dylan. Do whatever you do. Don't eat the spaghetti. Oh, here you go. Oh, Norwa. Dad. Yes, son? Mom saw the whole new way for me to keep my shirts clean. How's that, son? She won't let me wear any. Uh-oh. Anthony, give me that shirt you're wearing. Dylan. Yes, Lisa? Did I ever tell you that you remind me of the ocean? You mean I'm wild and romantic? No, you make me sick. Oh. Hey, Paul. Yeah, Tina? Do you know what the most common speech impediment is in American children? No. Bubble gum. No wonder I got sent down here. Hey, Adam. Yeah, Lisa? Do you like nuts? Why, do you want a date with me or something? <laughs> Lisa? Oh, what is it, Dylan? Lisa, I go through fire and water for you. You better make it just fire, John, because you're wet enough already. <laughs> Peter? Yeah, Paul? Do you know this principal believes in stern discipline? How's that? The last time my stern met his discipline, I couldn't sit down for a week. Yes, son? I did my first good deed as a Cub Scout today. Good, son. What did you do? I put a whooping cushion under the teacher's chair. That doesn't sound like a good deed to me, son. Yes, it is. Everybody in the class hates her. <laughs> hey, Adam, where's Dylan? I don't know, probably off getting ready for a date with Lisa. Hmm. Oh, there you are. Uh-oh. Have you ever wondered where your number twos go when you flush that toilet? No. Well, you're going to find out. <laughs> I get the feeling things are a bit out of control. Now, now, Dylan, about those number twos. Who blew this? What am I, anyways? Dylan, this is a sewerage treatment plant. There's one like it in practically every city and town in the country. You can distinguish a sewerage plant, say, from an automobile plant, by the unusual machinery. Not to mention the smell. Ugh. Whatever you do while you're here, Dylan, don't wander too far astray. After all, this is a big place. Now, all waste materials from surrounding communities, even your bathroom, Dylan, flow to the plant here and enter the grit room. This is where coarse materials are first screened out. The grit gets burned in an incinerator. Eventually, the flow heads to these tanks where oxygen is added to get rid of odors. Later, the flow reaches underground sedimentation tanks where gravity causes some materials to fall to the bottom while others float to the top. All the sludge, as it's called, is then collected. 
The sludge undergoes a bacterial change in the digestion tanks and becomes harmless. It is then pumped four miles out to sea for disposal. And that, Dylan, is briefly what happens to your number twos. Dylan? Dylan? Dylan! Man, I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Shh, don't let Violet hear you say that. The horseback riding program is the only good activity this place got. I hate the riding program. Hey, Violet! Ah, oh, there you go, Tina. Thanks. How'd you do? Lisa. Adam. Oh, Dylan. Oh, dear, there you are. Miss. Yes, yes, Adam. What is it? Speak. I don't think it's fair what you put on my report card. What? Well, right here where it says unsatisfactory attendance. Well, what of it? I don't think it's fair. I've been here every single day. I haven't missed one single class. I know, Adam. That's what I find so unsatisfactory. <laughs> and now for our next and final phone-in contest. The question to this contest is, what is the name of the boat of the, who won the America's Cup? If you know the answer, call us collect at 617-491-0340. Hello? Hello? Who is this? This is Sushant Rao. Oh, how you doing? Where are you from? Needham, Massachusetts. Massachusetts? Yep. Um, do you know the answer to the question? Yeah, Australia too. Congratulations, that's right. Oh, thanks. You win a t-shirt. Thank you. All right, um... You can stay on the line because you need to give your um, address so okay. they can send you the T-shirt. All right? All right, thanks for calling. Bye. Where's Dylan? Oh, I don't know. Probably off getting ready for his date with Lisa. His date with Lisa? How do you kids like my pancakes? Not bad, Viley. Yeah, they're pretty good. But they're a little crunchy. Oh, that's because there are so many of you campers, and I had to make so many pancakes, I put popcorn in the batter so they'd flip over by themselves. I'm surprised she didn't put cockroaches in them so they'd walk onto our plates. Just to say she didn't. Shut up and eat. Oh, Paul, would you like some more syrup? Sure, why not? You got it, kiddo. Enjoy it. Hey, you. Come here. I want to talk to you. What do you mean going around the studio and telling everybody I'm an idiot? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was supposed to be a secret. Well, it is, you see, and don't you ever forget it. Right. Hey, hey, wait, come back over here. What do you mean, a secret? It's not a secret. Oh, so you don't mind me telling everyone? No, that's okay. You go right on ahead. Go ahead. All right. The cameraman's an idiot! The hey, cameraman's... wait a minute. Come back here, you little rat. Adam. Yes, Mom. Adam, how many times must I tell you not to watch so much television? Now turn that racket off and go and do your homework. All right. You told me to do my homework. Your homework is making that terrible noise? No, my homework is to practice Beethoven's violin concerto in D minor. Until I get it right. I've always wondered why there are no flies in here. I mean, you'd think this would be the one place in the whole camp where there'd be millions of them. Not if you look at it logically. What do you mean? Well, the way I see it is, 
What's the first thing a fly would do when it flew in here? <laughs> Land on the food, of course. Right. And then it would try to eat some. Bingo, no more fly. Right. I wonder if anyone's thought of marketing this stuff. It couldn't, because it couldn't stand the smell. You oh, kid. <laughs> Want some? <laughs> well, that's it. What's it? The end of the show. Ah. Oh. But we'll be back next week. Well, not us exactly, but a whole bunch of kids to make a whole new mess of things. So tell all your friends to watch. I already told my friends. And what did they say? They thanked me for warning them. They said they'd make sure they were doing something else instead. Nice friends you have there, Adam. Anyway, remember to tell your friends to watch. Oh, Adam, you're supposed to jump in now and say, so they'll make sure to miss it. Well, so they'll make sure to miss it. Yeah. Adam. Oh, God. Excuse me. Gee, and if you like the show, please write us here at Don't Look Now, 125 Western Ave. Avenue, I meant to say, Boston, Mass, 02134. Until next time, I'm Tina. Paul, Lisa, Adam. Oh, what is Dylan? Boy, oh, Dylan, Dylan. Oh, Dylan. Dylan. about the yellow yuck. I mean, the nerve of those guys dumping on Adam and me. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, well, you wait till you get it, Paul. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. what are you kids still doing here? Oh, yeah, I have a date. Bye. Good, Good luck. luck. I asked you kids a question. What are you still doing here? The show's over. Go on home. Get, 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 get going. Go on. Bye, bye. See, See you next, next week. week. Oh, the, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> what do you mean, next week? We come back to do another show. Yeah. Oh, no. There must be something about this in my union contract. I'll go on home and let a lady have a good cry on her own. <laughs> Major funding for Don't Look Now was provided by the Mabel Louise Riley Foundation, a Boston-based foundation with special interest in children and youth. Additional funding was provided by public television stations and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. <laughs>